Hey everyone, it is Andrew here from iDownloadBlog. Today we're going to look at how to create a security system using old iOS devices, whether it's an iPhone, iPad, or even an iPod Touch. So the inevitable always seems to happen. You upgrade your device and you're not sure what to do with your old device. So if you have an iPhone, an iPad, an iPod Touch, or even an Android phone, you can actually use a free application to create a home security system. You could use just one device or use as many as you want inside your home to monitor different locations. The app is called ManyThing, so anything with an M in front. And it stands for Monitor Anything because that's really what it allows you to do. So there is a free plan, which is what we're on, but there are paid options if you want to do stuff like save recordings to the cloud. Each device can act as the recorder or the viewer. So in this case, I'm going to use this iPad as the camera, and I'm going to use my personal phone that I carry as the viewer. You can use the front or rear camera on your iPad or phone, and just hit that recording button, and it'll start monitoring. By default, it'll start recording as soon as it detects motion. There are lots of different configurations you can use to set this up exactly how you'd like as well. You can get there by hitting that gear icon in the top right hand corner. You can choose which camera you'd like to use, the front or rear. The recording mode, so we're just going to use motion recording. Whether or not we want to mute the audio, whether or not we want to use stills mode, which takes a photo every so often, or even turn on the flashlight. We can opt to receive alerts, and that's whether push notifications or emails. We can change the video quality, so if we are on a Wi-Fi network, we may not care, but if you're going to be using cellular for this, then you're going to definitely want to lower that quality a little bit and not eat up all of your data. Now, I really like the way they handle the viewer. You can basically pull up all the different angles or all the different cameras you have going on. So I have my current device there on the bottom. That's why it's kind of highlighted. I'm highlighting my door here on the top. So I'm watching for any motion of that door would open, or you can even use it to watch your pets. So if I want to see how my pet bunny is doing during the day, I can easily check in here and see a live video feed, make sure he's not getting into any trouble. This feed is currently live and it'll tell you that. And you can also just swipe through your cameras. So right now this is telling me this is live from Andrew's phone. This is from Michael's iPad. And this is from Andrew's other iPad that I've got going on. Unfortunately, it is a little bit slow when it's connecting and pulling down that live video. But once it starts streaming, it doesn't seem to have too much of an issue. On the iPad, the event is located in the top left hand corner. Though on the iPhone, it'll be located just below the video itself. So let's go over to my iPad that I have monitoring my sliding door. There are two issues that you may encounter. One is something like a reflection. So I have my reflection in my window here, or you could be seeing through a window and seeing motion outside like a car driving past or a pet walking around inside. We can compensate for both of those. First up is the sensitivity threshold. One is extremely sensitive and will get pretty much any motion, whereas 10 doesn't pick up much. Then there's also the detection zones. So we can block out areas that we don't want it to watch for motion. So I don't want to capture any of my actual reflections here because that's gonna be something coming from inside of the house. I just wanna watch that door to move so I can block out all of this reflective area here and then just the area at the bottom, it will watch for motion. So if I see my door slide, then I'm going to actually see that notification that there was motion. I really like the ability to block out certain areas. It's super useful. And that's something that even standalone cameras may not even have. And this is obviously something essentially free if you have an old device lying around. You'll notice in this shot, I actually have my iPad plugged in. And that's because you pretty much want to keep your iPad or iPhone or iPod plugged in, or you're really gonna have a problem with your battery life. There is an option to have the screen automatically dim, which helps, but really the most beneficial part is in the viewer side of the application, you can actually see the battery life and whether or not that device is plugged in. So you know if you have to be concerned about your camera going offline. Push notifications is also a really great feature. Even on the free version, you can get these push notifications letting you know that it got a detected motion and which camera it saw that motion on. If you want to play back any of these recordings and have them saved to the cloud, that unfortunately you're going to need to upgrade to one of the paid plans, though when you do sign up, you will have 30 days free on that uh, cloud recording option. What do you guys think of many things? Is this a viable alternative to a standalone camera? Let us know down in the comments and please subscribe if this video is useful. Otherwise, until next time, this is Andrew for iDownloadBlog.